Good evening. The makers of the new Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show with their guest tonight, Mr. Edward G. Robinson. Well, it's New Year's Eve, and our friend Andrew H. Brown hopes to go out on a big date with the very attractive Amethyst Dunbar. His one great problem is finding a tuxedo, and after scouring the whole town without success, things look bad for Andy. At the moment, he is telling his troubles to Amos. So you couldn't find a tuxedo in the whole town, huh, Andy? Not one. Well, I did find one, but you ought to see the shape it was in. Mm. There was not only fraying on the cuffs, but there was fraying on the fraying. Yeah, that's bad, already. Yeah, and my gal won't go out with me unless I dress up formal. Oh, the whole tuxedo situation is just like everything else this past year. You can't get nothing, nowhere, no how. Yeah. I'll sure be glad when this crazy year goes out tonight. Well, Ann, it's just like, uh, that all we gotta learn to do without certain things. Mm. You know what Ruby made for supper tonight? No, what? Uh, what they call the eggless, milkless, butterless cake. Yeah, well, the way things is going, pretty soon we'll have a cakeless cake. <laughs> oh, this is a bad year. Substitutes for everything. Well, Andy, you know the reason for it all. A certain man is trying to give the world a substitute for freedom, and while we is getting rid of that man, why, we got to give up a few things. Yeah, I guess so. I... Wait a minute. Come in, King Fee. Well, Come how are you there, boys? How are you? Hi there, King Fee. Yeah. Well, what you look so down the dumps boat, Andy? Oh, I don't know. Andy is mad about what a tough time he done had this year. Well, I don't blame you, Andy. This year wasn't no rose for me, neither. Wasn't, huh? No, look how I've been living. Me and my wife been fighting. Just finished another one. Sure enough. <laughs> it seems like at the end of every year, she takes all the little fights that we done had during the year and piles them up into one big one. That's what she <laughs> Sort of a review of all the little fights in one lump is what uh, they do. Uh, what is the trouble now, Kingsley? Oh, she brung up the time that I didn't want to kin folks to visit us. She brung up the thing about me not taking the job as a doorman. Oh, yeah, I was there for that one. That was a battle, all right. It wasn't no skirmish, I know that. <laughs> then last summer, she gave me $35 to pay some bills and told me to put it away, and I forgot where I put it. I never did find the 35 hmm. Oh, I remember that. Uh, that was last summer, yeah. Yeah, that started last summer. still going on. And the funny part of it is I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, we've been going hot and heavy with argument. Well, I don't see why I was sitting here sympathizing with you. I still got to get a tuxedo by 9 o'clock tonight. Well, you going to a party, Andy? Sure. I got a date with Amethyst Dunbar. Oh, you is, huh? Yeah, but she won't go out with me unless I got on a tuxedo. And I was crazy about that gal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're going to do, Andy, if you can't rent one. Oh, uh, need a tuxedo. Mm-hmm. Uh... Uh, of course, uh, I would lend you mine free, Ander, but uh, I done sent it down to Georgia to my wife's brother to get married in, and he ain't sent it back yet. Yeah. Oh, Ander's crazy about the gal he got a date with, too. You know, I was just thinking, uh, maybe through my disconnections, I might, uh, might be able to dig you up a tuxedo somewhere myself. Uh, uh, how much would you be willing to pay, Ander? Well, of course, I don't want to pay too much. Oh, I would protect you there, you know. But, uh, on the other hand, it wouldn't be right to pay too little. Uh, no, but, uh, if you could find me something somewhere along there, in between, not quite too much and almost too little, that'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am sure that, uh, that, uh, we can work out something, Andy. Uh, name your price. Two dollars. Uh, name another one. <laughs> Uh, look, Kingfish, if you think you know where you can get Andy a tuxedo, why don't you find out how much it's going to cost and then let Andy know about it? Well, you see, Amos, unless I know how much Andy's got, it's kind of hard for me to dicker. Yeah. But the trouble is, Kingfish, I don't know whether you is dicker in the tuxedo man or dicker in me. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no, now wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I assure that uh, that uh, we can work out with it. Yeah. 
In the first place, this tuxedo got so many mark holes in it that unless you put on underwear made out of the same material, people are going to think you're wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. I know that. Uh, meet me at the large hall in an hour, and I guarantee I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out here. Oh, great, Amos. Thank you. That, I could use them all right. You know, the last couple of formal fairs I done went to, I had to... going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. I know that. Uh, meet me at the large hall in an hour, and I guarantee I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out here. Oh, great, Amos. Thank you. That, I could use them all right. You know, the last couple of formal fairs I done went to, I had to... going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. I know that. Uh, meet me at the large hall in an hour, and I guarantee I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> What do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out... Yeah, always... Great, Amos. Thank you. That, I could use them all right. You know, the last couple of formal fairs I done went to, I had... They're going to think you're wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. Now, that's the thing. Mm. Uh, meet me at the large hall in an hour, and I guarantee I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out is the swing shift. That ha- I could use them all right. You know, the last couple of formal fairs I done went to... I had to going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. 1130. <laughs> uh, maybe all in an hour, and I guarantee I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out after that. Why, the whole thing might accumulate up to five or six. You know, the last couple of formal fairs I done went to, I had to... going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, that's eight dollars. I'll have you one. Okay, Kingfish. Get on the jeep. <laughs> What do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out... <laughs> well, now, listen, Kingfish. i got to have that tuxedo suit. But the formal fairs I done went to, I had to... going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. Deal with the man before he changes his mind. I'll have Lightning pick up the suit and bring it over to your room right away. Hey, Kingfish, get on the jeep. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no, now wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out... Okay, Kingfish, I'll do it. Me paying $18 to rent a tuxedo. It must be to... I had to... Going to think you wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get your right size, uh, 44. Is there, Lightning, and let's look at it. It's getting late, you know. Yeah, uh, uh, here it is now. I'll put, put them on. That's it. <laughs> what do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out on. Yeah, it's a 44, all right. 
Now, tell me this. How do it look? Uh, pretty good, Miss Vanna. Uh... They're going to think you're wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to think. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get you a right size, uh, 44. Uh, sometimes they got a label on the inside coat pocket that's got the date on it. Yeah, let me see here what it say. What you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no, now wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You, oh, I am sure that, uh, that, uh, we can work out. On. Yeah, it's a 44, all right. Now, tell me this. How do it look? Uh, pretty good, Miss Vanna. Uh... They're going to think you're wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to think. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get you a right size, uh, 44. Uh, sometimes they got a label on the inside coat pocket that's got the date on it. Yeah, let me see here what it say. What you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no, now wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You... Oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out. Yeah, it's a 44, all right. Now, tell me this. How do it look? Uh, pretty good, Miss Vanna. Uh... They're going to think you're wearing a polka dot suit. That's what they're going to think. <laughs> yeah, that's bad, all right. Oh, don't worry, Andy. I'll find you a tuxedo. I'll even get you a right size, uh, 44. Uh, they got a label on the inside coat pocket that's got the date on it. Yeah, let me see here what it say. What do you think of me trying Henry Van Porter? Maybe he ain't using his tonight. No, no, now wait a minute. Don't call up Henry. You, oh, I am sure that, uh, that uh, we can work out. Do you want me to close the door, Miss Andy? Uh, uh, what, uh, the door? Uh, uh, close it. Uh, yeah, sir. Oh, no, it's closed. Stick him up. Oh, uh, hey, uh, wait a minute, mister. Wait a minute. Don't point that gun at me. Please, sir, don't shoot. Uh, get up. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, don't, don't shoot, mister. Please don't. Up against that wall. Come on, back up. Keep your hands up. Uh, yeah, uh, mister, you can have anything I got. I don't want anything you got. All I want to do is to hide out here for a couple of hours. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir, mister. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can hide. Uh, I, I, I'll help you, mister. Now, yeah. take it easy, buddy. You ain't got nothing to worry about. I just want to lay low here till midnight. Pull down that shade. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, mister, that suit you was wearing, ain't you a convict? So what? I made my getaway from the death chamber, and I'm supposed to die at midnight. Now, what's it to you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, 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 who is you, mister? What's well, your name? it happens to be a number. Here it is, on the shirt. See? One, nine, four, three. Yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me, mister, one, nine, four, three, but what was you in for? Plenty of things, plenty, but mostly murders. They thought 1917 was tough, and they thought 1929 was pretty bad. 1917. 1929. And, mister, that number on your shirt there, 1943, them numbers mean something. Yeah. Them is years. Catch on quick, don't you? Uh, mister, by any chances, you... Yeah, just... you guessed it, buddy. You're talking face-to-face with a year. 1943. That's me. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. And this is the last day of the year. And you were supposed to die at midnight. Yes, sir, I can see what you mean by murders. You've been bad, all right. Now, never mind. Skip that part of it, buddy. Time is short, and i got to talk to somebody, so you stand there and listen. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, mister, please let me go, sir. Let me talk to you some other night. There won't be any other night, see? This is my last chance. All I want to do is talk. Tell you what's deep down in here. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. You see, buddy, when a year realizes that it only has a few more hours to live, a lot goes through his mind. Especially a year like me, a tough year. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, 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 I was just thinking about all the floods and the shooting, bombings and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. You're like everybody else. Glad to get rid of me. So what? I'm gone. It's just that I hate to leave without somebody knowing that it wasn't all my fault. 
Yeah, well, you was leaving things in a mess, mister. Yeah, well, it could have been different, too, buddy. But when I was a kid, I met a lot of wrong guys. And I'm taking the rap. What you mean? Well, I got mixed up with a guy named Adolf. I didn't have enough sense to see that he only looked up because he was picking on little fellas. Now, when it's too late, I can see that the guy who thought he was too smart to hang wallpaper is going to wind up hanging himself. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, and then there was a fat kid in the neighborhood by the name of Benito. Yeah, I used to say to him, Benny, let's play checkers. Then he'd say, no, let's help Adolf play London Bridge is falling down. Yeah, and then there was a half pine by the name of Tojo. He lived over on the west side. He showed me how to sneak up on people and let them have it in the back. Yeah, well, what kind of people live where you live, Mr. 1943? Wasn't there no nice kids? Oh, yeah, sure. Right across the pond from Adolph's and Benny was a kid named Frank. I guess his regular name was Franklin, but they called him Frank for short. He asked me to come over to his house one day and see a stamp collection. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Did you go? No. And I wish I had. Things would have been a lot different if I'd have been on his side. <laughs> I used to laugh when I thought about him saving stamps. Guess nobody realized that someday you'd be saving the little countries that printed a lot of them stamps. Uh, yes, sir. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, I've been tough, and I ain't making no bones about it. It's just that hey, maybe they're coming for me. Where can I go? Where can I hide? Well, uh, don't, don't worry, mister. Look, look, here. Tell you what you do. Here, put on this old robe of mine, and they won't see your prison suit. I'll tell them you was a friend of mine. Okay, buddy, but make it snappy. Yeah, here, put it on. There, there. Now, put your gun in this drawer. Yeah. Now, stand over there. Okay, buddy. Now, stick them up, Mr. 1943, and I ain't fooling. Oh, double cross, man. Keep those hands up. I mean it, because I don't like you no more than the rest of people do. Come in. Well, hello there. Well, uh, say, what's going on here? Hey, man, stand over here by me. I got him. That's a criminal. He was supposed to die at midnight. He ain't just a man. Look at him. He is a year. Look at the number on his shirt. 1943. Oh, yeah, he's a tough guy, and... Yeah, I'm going to call the police and turn him in. Okay, you got me, bud, but the cops will never get me. I'll be gone before they get here. Well, 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 what, what, will you, what will we do, Amos? Wait a minute, Andy. Uh, maybe... Maybe we won't turn him in. But Amos, he's been the worst criminal of all of them. That's right, Andy. 1943 has been bad. Full of suffering, crime, and heartaches, and everything else. All right, all right. Don't pull your punches. I can take it. Tell him how I killed six million people. Set fire to churches and put swastikas where crosses used to be. That's right, 1943. The world will never forget your sins. But you know, no matter how bad a person is, if you will look hard enough, you can find a little good in him. Good. 1943, you put out a lot of lights all over this world. But as you leave us tonight, we ought to remember that you left the light burning in the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. You noticed that, huh? Yes, sir, and there's other things, too. With all the bad things you have done, you still let somebody find enough time to print more copies of a certain book than was ever printed in one year before. The Holy Bible. Say, that's right. And when we needed it most, 1943, you give us the biggest potato crop we ever had in our history. And somebody told me that Somewhere in between your crimes, you look down on a scientist working on some old stale mold. And you let that man discover a new drug that will save millions of human lives. You know, and there no year that folks ever tore off the calendar was all good. 1943 ain't been all bad. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, buddy, because when I took over the reins last January 1st, things weren't so hot. I don't expect history to list me with the heroes. I'm no 1776, and I know it. Still, I tried, and I'd give anything in the world if I could try again. But a year has only one chance to make good, and people have many. That's him now, the new year. Well, this is where I came in. Hand me the gun, buddy. Give it to him, Andy. Well, you ain't gonna pull a fast one on us, is you? Well, the only thing I have left to pull, buddy, is a shade between two eternities. Well, here's your gun. Well, there's just one bullet left in this gun that has killed so many. I saved that one for myself. Guess I better go now and let him come in. You've got a lot to do, and he'll need every minute. 
Who knows? Maybe he's the year the world's been waiting for. And try to remember that even a good year can't do it all by himself. Give the kid a little help and be patient with him. The tide has already begun to turn, but it takes the right kind of people to make the right kind of year. And one more thing before I go. Remember that this new fellow will have 24 hours longer on the job than I had. For he'll have the extra day of leap year. Now, if you'll all pull together and do your share, that day can be the day of victory. Well, here I go. God bless you. Happy New Year. Come on in, 1944. Goodbye, world. Wake up. Uh, uh, huh? Andy, I'll bring you the studs. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, me. Why did that 1943 have to go and shoot himself? He was the best year I'd ever talked to. Andy, you must have been having a nightmare. Wake up. Come on, you got a date. You're going to be late if you don't hurry. Oh, me. Oh, oh. Amos, I guess you was right in letting him go, though. What? Well, he so appreciated them nice things that you said about him. Uh, uh, who, Andy? 1943. Andy, you feel all right? <sighs> who? Me? Yeah, Joe. Come on, Andy, pull yourself together. Here, I'll hold your coat for you. Here. Coat? Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's see how this tuxedo coat look on me. It's supposed to be a 44. It's an old style. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, how do it look? Let me see. Well, the shoulders don't fit bad. Uh, take the stuff out the pocket. It's kind of bulging there on the side, Andy. There ain't nothing in the pocket. It's something in the pocket. Sir. Oh, I tell you, it ain't. I got my hand in there now. I... Wait a minute. I do feel something. Let me lift it up. Look, there's something in the lining. Yeah, take that safety pin out. Look, Andy. Well, I'll be doggone as money. Ten, twenty, thirty, thirty-five. Amos, this is the thirty-five dollars the kingfish was telling us about that he never remembered where he put it. That's it, all right, Andy. Amos, hand me my hat and cane, son. Andy, you sure do look great. Oh, Amos, I'm telling you, this is a perfect forty-four. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are Amos and Andy, who would like to say a few words to their listeners. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Hello, folks. Well, this being New Year's Eve, we have asked permission to say a few words to our friends on the air. At this time of the year, we would like to let you know how grateful we are to you. We wouldn't feel right to let this old year pass over the hill without expressing our deep appreciation for the people who sponsor this program and make it possible for us to be here. That is, Lever Brothers, the people who make Rinso. We can truthfully say that since we have started our half-hour show in October, that we have never been treated with such cooperation and understanding in our entire radio career. We told you once before about going through and seeing a make soap, and we can tell you from experience that the product we represent, Rinso, is the greatest product of its kind. And we've had many letters from our listeners telling us that. Uh, we hope you folks don't get mad if you don't find that your grocer don't have it on the shelf because sometimes the grocer doesn't have it there. There's no rinse on the shelf, but it's well worth waiting for. He is getting it as fast as it can possibly be made, and by waiting for it, 
you'll be helping yourself and helping us a lot, too. At the end of the year, everybody sort of takes inventory, and in our checkup at the end of 1943 tonight, we find that we are rich in friends, and truthfully, that is the most important thing we know of. We are deeply grateful to you for this, and so from our hearts, we want to thank you sincerely, as two people can thank their many friends. We promise you that during the coming year, we will redouble our efforts to bring you the best that's in us. And for the splendid cooperation that we've received from the boys in the orchestra, from our guest stars, from Harlow Wilcox, members of our cast, and everyone connected with our show, we want to say to them many thanks, and a Happy New Year. And to you, our friends, we say, may the New Year bring victory to us and our valiant allies all over the world. That is our wish for a Happy New Year. And now, let's all join in the chorus of Old Lang Syne. Perhaps you're lucky enough to have your loved one in the service home on leave. And you wouldn't be human if you didn't want to know about everything he's doing. Nor would it be unnatural for him to want to tell you. And yet that very enthusiasm, that desire to confide, can bring tragedy. Even when you're with family or friends and are sure no enemy agent can hear, it isn't safe to mention items of war information. Remember, things which don't seem important to you may be of vital importance in a link of information. So don't ask and don't tell where our soldiers are, how many there are, how they are being transported, when they're going, or what kind of duty they're going on. If you do hear it from someone, don't repeat it. If you see it yourself, don't repeat it. But if you read it in the newspapers or hear it on the radio, you can talk all you like. Otherwise, mum's the word. Join us again next week at the same time for the Amos and Andy Show, when the boys' guest will be the motion picture star, Pat O'Brien. Our thanks to Edward G. Robinson for appearing with us tonight. He may currently be seen in the universal picture, Flesh and Fantasy. This program is broadcast to our armed forces everywhere. This is Harlow Wilcox bidding you good night and repeating from all of us to all of you, Happy New Year!